Welcome to Question Time, and tonight we're in Bedford. Good, so here we are with our panel, the first female Lord Chancellor in a thousand year history, and the Justice Secretary, Liz Truss. The Labour MP who resigned from the Shadow Cabinet, refusing to vote for Article 50, Dawn Butler. The former Liberal Democrat leader, now in the House of Lords, Mingus Campbell. The Mail on Sunday columnist, Peter Hitchens. And the guitarist from Bombay Bicycle Club, whose campaign for young people to get a Brexit to suit them has over a million, a quarter of a million, I should say, supporters. Jamie McCall. You'll be, great, you'll be grateful for the extra three and a quarter million I gave you. Yeah, but no doubt it'll go to a million. <laughs> well, actually, As we've, a, we've reached eight million young people. Eight should, million? Yeah. Eight million? Yeah, you signed on? Your researchers haven't done oh. their job this year. You time. can't <laughs> have gone from a quarter of a million to eight million. Well, it's complicated. We can talk about I it. I bet it is. We'll talk, about it. we'll talk about it afterwards, yeah. outside. Price Waterhouse should be called it. Price yeah. Waterhouse, <laughs> needed. <laughs> Right, just a reminder, you can join the debate, as ever, on Facebook, on Twitter, or you can text us on 83981 with your, uh, your questions. Let's have our first question tonight. Um, it comes from Nicholas Smith, please. Nicholas Smith. Is it acceptable for people to view indecent images of children without the threat of being prosecuted? The key to this being without the threat of being prosecuted, the National Police Chief Counsel Leader for Child Protection said... Only paedophiles, he said this this week, only paedophiles who pose a really significant threat should face jail sentences because, I quote him, the police cannot cope with the increase in reports of child abuse, up 80% over three years. So only those who pose a really significant threat. Of All right, but Peter Hitchens, let's just stick with this, that uh, only those who pose a really significant threat should get jail sentences because the police can't cope. What's your view? Well, my own personal response has to be that I don't know because I don't know enough about it. But I think that we do need to be careful about rushing into a unanimity and saying that just because everybody in this room and everybody in this panel regards the sexual abuse of children with a unique horror, uh, that we can't even consider something being put forward by an expert in this matter who is saying we don't have the resources to do this. It's all very well to sit here and say, yes, let's carry on doing what we have been doing up till now and ignore him. But actually, in truth, you may well find that those who've sat here and said this will, in years to come, because the resources are not there, will fail to do that. It's child abuse. But, but, but I know it's child abuse, That's why, and, 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 and that, that, is, that, that is the point that I've just made that it is, is something we all regard with horror. There are lots of things we regard with horror as well, which are, which are also not, I have to say, being particularly adequately prosecuted or pursued by the, the law enforcement systems of this country. But the, the point is this, if you're going to say loudly, we mustn't do anything, I think you should be careful that people in four or five years' time, when they look at your performance in government, don't find that you have, in fact, done precisely what this Chief Constable is recommending. It's all very well being publicly, fashionably militant about a subject, but it doesn't necessarily solve the problem of whether you've got enough resources to do it. Right. And I think in all honesty, I have to say that because I'm sick of hearing people piling in and saying what they hope everyone will approve of them saying. Jamie McCall. Well, <laughs> I'm going to agree with Peter, which I didn't think I would do very often tonight. Um, and I agree, it's, it's a question of resources, I think. Um, according to the National Crime Agency, one in 35 British men have a se sexual interest in children. Let's say even a tenth of that number um, looks at indecent images online. That's 75,000 people. There simply isn't enough space in prisons to lock that many people up. So I think you need to look at alternative methods, whether it is, is counselling or voluntary or not involuntary chemical cast um, castration or, or medication. So, um, as any, yes, let's hear from, yes, the woman in yellow there. Um, I agree with what Jamie just said and um, also that you need to look at the root of the issue and why this is happening. As Liz Truss said, it's 50% of the, of the uh, cases are sex cases, so why 
aren't these people getting the help that they need? Obviously, there's some people that are just evil, but you know, they obviously need some sort of counselling, like Jamie just said. All right, well, let's, I, I, let's move swiftly on to the second question, which is the cause for the comments that were made, because what he said was, the police can't cope with the increase in reports. We've got a question from Siobhan Holland. Could we have that question? And then, that's right, it applies to this. Are cuts in police funding putting public safety at risk? Uh, cuts in police funding putting public safety at risk, and of course this is one area of public safety. Peter Hitchens, you go on that. Not in themselves, no. And I think we should be careful not to allow ourselves to be diverted into, a, into campaigns for extra funding. The problem with the police and the problem with the courts and the problem with our entire criminal justice system is that for 50 years they've been doing the wrong thing. And however hard you work at doing the wrong thing, however, if, however vigorously you pursue it, however much money you pour into it, it won't work. The, the police force of this country was set up by Robert Peel with a simple purpose to prevent crime. Since it abandoned its function of preventing crime by preventive patrolling in the 1960s, under the instructions of the then Home Secretary Roy Jenkins, it has become a reactive fire brigade force which waits for things to happen and reacts to them. The courts are the same. They wait for things to happen. They cease to deter them from happening by, by, by a visible presence of policing. They cease to punish them when they do happen because once you stop, once you stop deterring them, they become much more common. This is also the, reasons why, the reason why Prisons are incredibly overfull because exactly the same thing has happened. They've ceased to deter. Uh, the people don't go to them until they've already become habitual criminals, and they are impossible to empty, and they're also impossible to build fast enough to hold. It would be odd to put them in prison. We, we've got a complete breakdown. Of, yes, and, it is, yeah. and it's not. And I, I just want to say, in prison can, before can they I just become one point on this point of resources. Right, right. Before the police reforms instituted by Roy Jenkins, we had a f uh, we had fewer police. Um, we, we, have, we, have, we have fewer police than, than, than we have now by a long way, either as per head of the country or as a total. They, those of us who remember those times, and uh, alas, I'm now old enough to do so, can tell you that this country was policed far more effectively on right. a far smaller budget in that time than okay. it is now. OK. The woman in white in the back there. Having people at the front line, whether those are police officers or whether they're judges or magistrates, can help people before right. they commit crimes okay. that end up leading right. to prison. Okay. I think okay. that okay. is very okay. important. I just would, just okay. one, I mean, to, to try and sum Brief up the, 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 the whole Don't point here, quantity isn't everything. As I can tell you from very painful experience, if they give you the wrong antibiotic for a disease, it doesn't matter how much they give to you, it still won't make it better until they change the drug. Until they change the drug, nothing will happen. We are doing the wrong thing. What people want in this country is a presence of authority on the streets, preventing disorder and preventing crime. There isn't, there isn't actually all that much, as, as I, I think Dawn probably knows, there isn't actually all that much that the police officer can do for you after a crime has been committed. He can't put your home back right. together after it's been burgled. Can can I make, what we want is for no. police to prevent them being burgled point. in the first place. Very, very quick. So I've got to chair this and we've got a lot of questions. Right. Our audience very wants very to quick ask. point. Very quick. Don't Maybe. be seduced by the idea that amalgamations always produce success. Mm. Scotland has created a single police force based in Edinburgh. As a result, local influence, mm. which previously was very important, has literally been put to one side. Yeah, yeah. There's an important relationship between the local community and those who police it. Don't believe that a large-scale right. amalgamation okay. makes that any better. Right. So... I'm sorry, I, we, we, if we went on for two hours, I'd take all the points, but I can't, we've only got an hour. And I have to say, we're going to be in Sunderland next week, before we go on, and Bognor Regis the week after. You'd like to come to Sunderland or Bog Bognor Regis, the address is there on the screen. We've had lots of questions on our next topic as well. Heather Jones, you have the conch. Should EU citizens' right to live here be a bargaining chip? Should EU citizens' right to live here be a bargaining chip? Um, Liz Truss. Well, we are absolutely clear that we want EU citizens to have the right to live here, but that that has to be part of our negotiations with the European Union. It's going to be an early priority in the negotiations once we've triggered Article 50. But the issue is, at the moment that we have UK citizens living in Europe, we want to protect their interests as well. So they, so are, a bargaining. Be wrong. they are a bargaining chip. It will, they are, it is part of the discussion 
that we are having with the European Union. Absolutely. And that's also what the other countries in Europe want to discuss with us. It has to be a reciprocal arrangement, as many of the arrangements we have with the EU, whether it's about mm. trade, whether it's about criminal justice, we have to find an agreement. And but we're hang on, very let, me just, let me just clarify this. David, the, the we are three, very confident uh, sorry, we will three, get an agreement. You but... may be confident, but you're saying that three million EU nationals who live here in the UK are a bargaining chip with the EU. Right. What I am saying is the status of EU nationals is, of course, part of the discussion, part of the reciprocal arrangements for when we leave the EU, as are our discussions about criminal justice. One of the things I'm involved in is discussions about family justice Fine. We're talking, and custody we're not arrangements talking about that. We're talking about border. EU citizens, but my point which is was the issue that uh, Heather Jones asked you know, we, we, about. We uh, need so to make sure that UK citizens who yes. live in Europe are also protected. Would you agree, we are confident would you ag we can achieve would you a agree deal, with Liam, David. Would you agree with Liam, Liam Fox, Fox that, exactly. it, that their status is one of the main cards in the negotiations? Are those words you would endorse? What I would say, in my own words, ah, no, is that it's an important it. part yeah. of the discussion. All right, Peter All right. Hitchens. Well, the European Union certainly regards British citizens on, on its territory as a bargaining chip, so I really don't see why. <laughs> We should, be, we should be at all hesitant about, uh, about returning the favour. So why not just say, yes, of course, everything's going to be a bargaining chip from now on. It's not, it's not particularly distressing to have to admit that these things are going on. We face a long period of extremely hard bargaining. And if we, and if we bargain soft, we'll lose, uh, as you always do. So I, don't, I really don't see why people are being so coy. I don't see why, the, why Liz Truss is being so coy about, about simply saying yes. The thing which annoys me about this uh, is the, the behaviour of the House of Lords. <laughs> and I, I just can't, I can't, if I, it, it's a very, it, it's a very simple point. I mean, I, I'm not actually in favour of referenda. I think they're horrible things, but there has been one and it just can't with a verdict. If, I, if, if, the, if the government came to the House of Lords and said, we would like to bring back, as they should, a selective state grammar schools and, and legislate to make that legal again, which it isn't currently, the House of Lords would turn around and say, you can't do that, you haven't got a mandate. The same people who last night voted against the, the, against the mandate of the referendum would refuse to legislate to, to, in, in favour of grammar schools because they would say there was no mandate. Right. They are completely unprincipled, and their behaviour oh. last night was totally right. unprincipled me, 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 and should be condemned. Well, <laughs> well, we discussed the, de the details and the terms of the deal. So that, is the, that is the right moment to we discuss We're going back that. to a fascist state here. You can't just take people out after so many years living here, contributing here and say I, I they're no, a bargaining nobody, chip. Nobody has talked about chucking anybody out well, at that's all. The million, that's nobody, nobody, that. nobody has advocated it, nobody has suggested it, it's not under discussion. What we need to be aware of is this, that when these negotiations get going, there are many, many very, very hard points, from, from fisheries to, to, to the right to live in places which are going to have to be dealt with by us, by, with European Union negotiators. If we give away a profoundly important negotiating point before we even go into the chamber, we are simply cutting our hands off. But, what is the point uh, of doing it? We just don't do it. And the, the yeah, reason for the government's behaviour, I, I, I'm no friend of this government. I think it's a ridiculous government. Right. I, I really do think that it, it is absurd to, to suggest that the government should give up a key negotiating position just before yeah, but, it goes but, into but, negotiation. But, 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 can I just ask you, Peter, Peter Hitchens, do you equate fishing rights with <laughs> his wife and people? Well, actually, I think, I think those, those people whose livelihoods have been destroyed by the, by the theft of our mm. fishing grounds Jamie, by the European I mean, Union might well equate them, yeah. How can oh, they be I'm going to go on to another question. Brenda Evans' question, please. Does the Copeland by-election result prove that Labour is slipping into obscurity under Corbyn's leadership? Labour slipping into obscurity and Tories took a by-election from Labour, which hasn't been done for over 30 years. Peter Hitchens, your turn. I want to try and get one last question. Yeah, well. I, on the question of Jeremy Corbyn, people repeatedly say, I hear it about nine times a week, the Labour Party can't win a general election with Jeremy Corbyn as leader. This is perfectly true. It's not very important because the Labour Party can't win a general election with anybody as leader. <laughs> it, is a, it, is a, it is a dead party. And the man who killed it was not Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn just sits on the coffin and moans. The man who killed it was one Anthony Charles Linton Blair. And he killed it 
fundamentally, he killed it, he, he killed it fundamentally with the Iraq war, uh, which I think destroyed it utterly and, and, and left it completely demoralized. And he then killed it by persuading, uh, by, by, uh, by allowing uh, the huge amounts of money which he used to raise from billionaire donors to shift to the Conservative Party. And the reason they shifted the Conservative Party was because the billionaire donors realised that the new Labour project was now safe in the hands of people like Liz Truss, who is actually a Liberal Democrat, as far as I know. All right. Um, and, and so we have, we, we have a bizarre situation in British politics where the Conservative Party has become the Labour Party. The Labour Party has died and been replaced by the Scottish Nationalists in Scotland. And almost, <laughs> and almost I, I admit it's nearly as bad All as right, come algebra. On, Peter, we're coming but you do, hang on, I've had about one tenth the time. Really. Yeah, uh, what I'm saying is much more interesting than they did as well. Peter. All right, ah. you, said, you said that in the third row. <laughs> we only have a couple of minutes, come on. I'm told that I thought our time was up. We have time for just one very quick question from Nino Silvestri, please. Yes, Mr. Um, Silvestri. Uh, has, a, has a Philip Green done enough to redeem himself, or should we take his knighthood away? Right. Yes or no answers. Round the table. Ming? I'm not interested now, in these... yes or no answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double-headed question. I'm not interested in his knighthood. What I'm interested in is the fact he's actually done the proper thing by those who were beneficiaries of the pension scheme who right. otherwise have been very, very I'm sorry, we really are running out of time. Jamie McCall, yes or no, should he keep his knighthood now or not? No, he may have done it, but in the words of one BHS employee, it was literally the very least thing he could do. Liz Truss? <laughs> I would say, David, better late than never. Uh, wait, what? Better late than never. And should he keep his knighthood, which Parliament it's, voted he shouldn't it keep? It is a massive for the independent committee. It is. And your opinion? It's a matter for the independent committee. I'm a government minister. It would be completely wrong for me to comment. I understand he's £200 million short, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, a knighthood if he gives... Keep, keep it if he gives another £200 million. I'll reconsider it if he gives... Right, if, right. if he... If he... Uh, <laughs> if he locks up the deficit. <laughs> Peter Hitchens. Well, 88% is not 100%, and I don't think it's enough for the pensioners. And as for a knighthood, who wants one anyway? I don't think even Nigel Farage wants one. <laughs> I think he does, actually. <laughs> he said he does. He that was the, that was the, that was the <laughs> other question we had, whether <laughs> Nigel Farage should get a knighthood or not. That we met. Arx Douglas. What? Arx Douglas, Arx Douglas Castle. Well, he was here last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was here last week and we were told he'd stopped him getting a knighthood. Exactly. I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> our time really is up. We must, we must, we must, uh, we must, we must go. Uh, we're going to be in Sunderland next Thursday, and we have the Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell, among our panellists there. And the week after that, we're going to be in Bognor Regis. Now, on the screen, as always, the address you can go to uh, if you want to come to Sunderland or Bognor Regis is the website address and also a telephone number, 0330-123-9988. Five Live. If you're listening on Five Live, the debate goes on until one in the morning on Question Time Extra Time. Here in Bedford, my thanks to our panel and to all of you who came to take part. Until next Thursday. From Question Time, good night. Next on BBC One, Alex Salmond helps to review the political week. And there's more on Trump. Stay up late with This Week 